nombre es Jacobin. Welcome back, guys, to another What Ifs in Video Games. I'm Jacobin, and yes, I was the Pink Power Ranger stunt devil. <laughs> Today's video is about a game that's near and dear to my heart. Zelda, Link to the Past. But what if Zelda was actually the puppet master of the whole event in the game? But before we can get into that, let's talk about the gameplay and the history. History. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past was released in 1992 in North America. It was the first and only Zelda game on the SNES. It was a pre-sequel to the original Zelda for the NES. It has sold over 4 million copies and many fans still think it's one of the best games in the series. It's so good. It's so good. The game starts with a young boy awakened by a telepathic message from sexy Zelda. <laughs> she tells Link that she's locked in a dungeon in Hyrule's castle. Link's uncle tells him to stay in bed and leaves for battle. But Link was like, F that uncle, and went to Hyrule's castle. Peace! If you go to the top of Hyrule Castle, you'll find a bush. If you chop that bush, you'll find a hole. Once you fall in that hole, you find your uncle mortally wounded. He gives you his sword and shield, and then you just leave. Link doesn't even really help him. He just walks away, doesn't even say anything to him. After that, Link navigates through the castle and finds Zelda and rescues her. After going through a secret passage, they finally make it to the sanctuary where an old man is waiting for them. The old man tells you about a wizard named Agnihim. Agnihim wants to take over the throne and he wants to break a seal made a hundred years ago by the seven sages to imprison Ganon in the dark world. <laughs> You find out the only thing that can stop Agnihim is the Master Sword. But before you can get that sword, you need to get the three magic pendants. Once you get the three magic pendants, you go into the woods to the northwest. You pull the Master Sword out of the stone. After you get the sword, you rush to Hyrule Castle to stop Agnihim. After easily beating him, you're sent to the Dark World. Whoa. Where Zelda tells you that you need to save the seven descendants of the seven sages. After beating the seven dungeons, you have rescued the seven sages. They use their power to break down the barrier around Ganon's tower. Where you face Agnihim one more time. After beating him, Ganon rises up from his dead body. Just like Voldemort. He turns into a bat and flies away. He flies to the Pyramid of Power in the center of Dark World. Where you chase after him and jump into the Pyramid of Power. You fight Ganon. <laughs> you, you smell bacon. After being Ganon, the room up top opens up. Link touches the Triforce. He wishes for both the Dark World and the Hyrule to go back before Ganon invaded. Gameplay. Link to the Past is a hack and slash action adventure. There are many items that can help you on your journey. My personal favorite is the boomerang. I love it when you throw the boomerang and hit a bad guy and he's frozen. That's cold. If you kill that enemy, you get a rupee, the currency in the game. You can buy bottles, potions, bombs, and arrows. If you collect four heart pieces, you can gain one heart. Or you can be a dungeon and get a full heart piece. The game has two different worlds. You can go between the light world of Hyrule or you can go to the dark world. You can switch back and forth between worlds with the magic mirror. 
When you first go into the dark world, you're just an adorable bunny. <laughs> He's a bunny. After beating the third dungeon, you receive the Moon Pearl, which will keep you in your human form in the dark world. My favorite part of this game are the dungeons. The dungeons are beautifully designed and the puzzles are fun to solve. In each dungeon, you'll find an item that will help you in the game or help you get to other areas in the game. The dungeon bosses are fun and some can be really easy to beat. But there are two bosses I hate. The third boss in the light world, I don't know why, I just had a hard time hitting his tail. He just kept knocking me off the edge, which was driving me crazy. Also, the third boss in the dark world had a very hard time dodging the spikes. But after a while, I finally beat him. You know what? I felt very great about it. <coughs> loser, loser. We just saw the gameplay in the history. Let's talk about the what if. What if Princess Zelda wanted the power of the Triforce for herself, but the only person in her way was Ganon? What if Ganon wasn't really the villain? What if he was just a king over the Dark World, and that's all he was? He had no evil intention to take over Hyrule, so why was Ganon painted as the villain? Let's look at the facts. Link was probably born as a peasant and not well educated. Link and his uncle must have worked for Hyrule royal family as stable hands. That's why Zelda knows Link. It's the start of many good romance books. Oh yeah. One day, Link's uncle overheard Zelda talking to a man with a hood. Agnaheim? Agnaheim? Not even close. She wanted to manipulate Link. So he would go to the Dark World and defeat Ganon, who had the Triforce. Link's uncle went back to his house. Link was sound asleep. Link's uncle couldn't let Zelda use Link like that. He got his sword and shield and went off to stop Zelda. During this time, Link got a message from Zelda. She says she's locked in a dungeon, which was part of her plan to make herself look innocent and show Link there was a threat. Link's uncle got to the castle, but before he could get to the front door, he was stabbed in the gut and threw down a hole in the right hand corner of the castle. Link eventually finds his uncle, his uncle gives him the sword and shield, and then saves Zelda. After saving Zelda, they have reached the sanctuary where an old priest is at, which is probably Agnihim, Zelda's minion. The old priest tells the story about Agnihim, the Master Sword, and the Three Pendants. All of it was just a ruse to see if Link was strong enough to face the Dark World. The Three Magic Pendants? Just normal pendants. The Master Sword? They got that at a pawn shop. Whoa, whoa, what? Link gets the Master Sword, he fights Agnihim. Which Agnihim just lets him win and sends him over to the Dark World. Where Zelda tells him about the Seven Stages and tells him that he needs to free them. I just want to point out, how does Zelda know that Link needed to free the Seven Sages? And also know where they are located, unless she's been to the Dark World before. Sages are really Zelda's henchmen. They were caught trying to steal the Triforce. So Ganon imprisoned them in Crystal and put them in different dungeons all over Dark World. Zelda knew if all seven of them used their powers together, they could make a hole in the Pyramid of Power then send Link in to kill Ganon. After a vicious fight with Ganon, Link has killed him. Link goes into the Triforce room. Right when he was about to touch it, he was stabbed in the back by Zelda. Blood twist. With his last breath, he says, <laughs> Now Zelda can have any wish she wants. Power, money, or even to be the supreme ruler. But Zelda knows what she wants. She touches the Triforce and yells out loud, I want to become a dude! Thanks again guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. To show my gratitude, I'm gonna select one random subscriber and they're gonna have a choice of a new game, old game, any game under 60 bucks, it's yours. So please click on Rick Astley's face to subscribe. Also guys, leave me some feedback, what I could do better.